Welcome to Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is Devotional 501. The name of our devotion today is Strength and Refreshment. But first, let us pray. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 3 says, He is the source of every mercy, the God who comforts us. My Father, Heavenly God, Prince of Peace, thank you so much, my Father. You are the God that comforts us. You are the source of mercy, compassions, my Father. The Bible says that your mercies are new every morning, my Father, every morning. A clean slate, a new opportunity, my Father, to start over, to do things different, to find the comfort of God, the comfort of Jesus to be able to be strengthened and refreshed, my Father, as we walk this earth, as we are on our journey, my Father, to becoming better, to be coming more mature, to growing, to the stature, to the knowledge and the maturity of Christ. Thank you so much, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Strength and refreshment. Comfort is a rare and wonderful gift. Do you remember a time when you were a kid and you badly needed some comfort? Perhaps it was something as simple as a skinned knee, but your mother took it seriously and gave you comfort by kissing and then bandaging the hurt and telling you everything would be all right. Or maybe as you got older, and someone you cared about hurt you deeply, a friend comforted you with words of encouragement. Such memories are warm and wonderful, yet sometimes the comfort of a loved one isn't enough. Sometimes the hurt is so deep that no human words can help relieve the pain. No mere bandage can cover the damage. That's when you need to look beyond human comfort to something much more effective, the comfort of God. This isn't some mystical, faraway concept. God really does provide comfort to those who call upon him in times of need. The trouble is that many people are so busy blaming God for their troubles that they don't even realize how close he is and how much he wants to comfort them. Unlike human comfort, which feels good for a moment, God's comfort supplies strength for a lifetime. The meaning of comfort takes on significance when it describes God's actions towards us. When the Bible talks about God's comfort, it describes a comfort of strength and refreshment. As the root of God's comfort is the idea of nearness. Indeed, when he comforts us, God calls us near. In God calling you near in your time of trouble, God is also saying to you, I want to have a relationship. Let's talk. Let's chat. Let's spend some quality time together. I encourage you to go to him in prayer through his word. There you will find the strength, the safety, and the solace. Are you hurting? Do you struggle with loneliness? God wants you to draw near to him so you can feel his everlasting love. Go ahead, ask God for his comfort in every detail of your life. Looking back on what God has done for you strengthens your faith in the future. Even if you don't feel God is close to you, it is possible to know that he is near. Rather than using God to solve your problems, use your problems to get closer to God. God doesn't promise you a life without difficulties, but he does promise that he will always be with you through every difficulty. We can't always choose the situations that life brings to us, but we can choose the attitude we will use to face them. Sometimes the most effective words of comfort are no words at all. God's comfort doesn't necessarily make you comfortable, but it will give you the hope that tomorrow will be a better day. God may not give you comfort if it keeps you from doing what he wants you to do. It is possible for God to give you comfort without removing your adversity. 
God's comfort may be just what you need to deal with your adversity. One of the reasons God comforts us is so that we can comfort others. Never attach strings to the comfort that you give someone else. If you don't know how to give comfort to others, try putting yourself in their place. Our ultimate comfort is knowing that someday we will be with God. Strength and refreshment equals God's comfort. God's comfort is something that it is valuable, it is a treasure. God's comfort, God's love, can help you navigate even the most difficult situations in your life. The hope that God is near, the hope that God is with us, the hope that God is the healer, the provider, the defender. Our faith produces hope. Hope in the God of heaven and earth. Hope in the one that sets a mantle of stars in the heavens and calls them by name. That is the God that we serve. The God that knows us personally, individually, not collectively. He knows each and every one of us by name. And he's interested in every detail of our lives. And he's waiting for us to invite him, for us to acknowledge him. And that is what true comfort is all about. Having an intimate relationship with your Father in heaven. And that comfort will always be available for us through strength and refreshment. Thank you, Lord, for this message. Thank you, my Father, for your strength, your refreshment, your comfort. Thank you that you lead us down paths of righteousness. Thank you for your still waters and green pastures of Psalm 23. You refresh our souls, my Father. Thank you so much for everything that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. My friend, I encourage you to play in the light, play in the sunshine, dance in the rain, and also keep on smiling because God loves you so very, very much. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. This is a prayer to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Father God, thank you so much, my Lord, for Jesus. Thank you so much that I realize that I am a sinner and that I need a Savior, God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the precious blood that was shed on the cross at Calvary for me, for my sins. Lord Jesus, I ask you forgiveness for every one of my sins. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. I give you my word that from this day forward, I will follow you. I will read the word, I will go to church, and I will spend time with you, Lord Jesus. I want to get to know you more. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for making something of my life that is worthwhile, something wonderful. Thank you, Lord, for accepting me as your son, as your daughter, into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, for your love, for your great grace, in your name I pray, Lord Jesus. Thank you for receiving me today. Amen. My friend, if you have made this prayer, if you have said this prayer, I congratulate you for because today there is a celebration in heaven. The Bible says that when one sinner repents, there is a celebration. In other words, there is a party in the kingdom of God. And so I congratulate you because it is the absolute best decision that you will ever make or have ever made in your life. Many blessings to you and to your family. In Jesus' name, amen.